Okay, we begin on all four words, hands and knees. For a few moments, let's close our eyes. And we'll do that most important move that we do, which as I say, is can't be captured in Instagram. It's not an Instagram shot, but it's the most important movement we do in our practice, which is to come out of our head, to come into our body, and to come into present moment awareness. So that's an internal shift. Letting go of thinking and becoming present. So we just, you know, it's the fundamental act of mindfulness to not process the moment through the thinking mind, but just to allow it to be there in awareness. And that's a shift we do through the practice, becoming aware, becoming present. So as I say, we disengage from thinking by engaging with our body. We just feel the body's presence. We know our body in awareness. And we disengage from thinking by engaging with our breath. So again, we just open to the experience of our breath. And tuck your toes. Begin to move on an exhale. Set your bum back towards your heels. And inhale, rise up again to be on all fours. So we'll move with our breath. Exhale, sitting back. Inhale, rising up. Now, move with your breath. Really important. That asks us, of course, to be mindful of our breath, to be mindful of what we're doing. And if you care to, now point your toes, careful, and you travel back further with more movement in the back. And let's do that a few times. So just loosening out our lower back. Okay, maybe we'll do two more. The inhale, exhale back. The inhale brings us back to all fours. Pause for a moment and then introduce some circular movements for your lower back. Moving your bum and hips in circles and experiencing that, of feeling this movement. Nice big circles. Great. Change the direction. So again, you know, through the practice, we want to deepen our sense of embodiment. So movements like this can really help bring us down into a visceral, experiential um, connection with our physical form, our physical body. Grand. Nice. And we come back again to be on all fours. Take your knees as wide as your mat. My knees go really wide, as wide as the mat. Bring your big toes together. And next, sit again back towards your heels. So we stretch out our back. Now you can wriggle a little bit, nice and slowly. Just wriggle your bum a little closer to your heels. Take your hands maybe forward towards the front of your mat. I'd say take your hands nice and wide, even as wide as your mat. Just Create space across the upper back and shoulders. And then just uh, slight shift side to side, just move a little bit side to side, just bring some comfortable movement to your lower back. Great. And we pause for a few moments. Now, as, as I say lately a lot, we disengage from thinking by engaging with our body and our breath. So here we can. Say breathe into the lower back. Inhale, breathe into your lower back and exhale through your chest. And exhaling out of the, the chest. For a couple more rounds. Nice long, slow, conscious breaths. Good. 
on an inhale. Let's come back to be on all fours. And we're moving our spine, flexion and extension in cat cow. So hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath, knees underneath your hips. On an exhale, taking mid back, upper back towards the ceiling, looking back between your legs and tucking your tailbone. Flexion of the spine. And then inhale. Come back to neutral, then arch your back, open your shoulders and gaze forward. And we go between both of those, rounding on the exhale, arching the back, opening the shoulders, extension on the inhale. Now again, as much as possible, move your spine, your entire spine, bowing it in one direction and then bowing it in the second direction. Keep your arms straight, shoulders over your wrists. Avoid the uh, legs kind of swaying forward and back. Keep your hips over your knees. So then the movement is in the spine. And then as I say, not just moving the head, but moving the entire spine as much as possible. Rounding, lifting mid back up towards the sea. And the exhale, inhale, arching. And the exhale is like a cat by the fireplace stretching. Cat pose. And on the inhale, it's kind of like a cow in a field, I suppose. Just look at the cow pose. Good. And we'll do one more of each. Feel the movement in your upper body, in your back. Good. And exhale. Pause. Back to neutral. Okay, we'll side. Um, We'll stretch each side now and turn. Once again, take your bum back towards your heels. Slide your knees a little wider apart if that makes it more comfortable for you. And take both hands over to the same side of your mat. Now keep the uh, hip and the bum anchored down. Slide your hands forward, so not necessarily out to the side, but just forward. And we stretch from our hip through our side body, through our shoulder, and from our shoulder, along the arm into the fingers. Now make it comfortable. As you inhale, take the breath into your outer ribs. And peel apart your outer ribs. So we side bend. And we also get a nice stretch on that lower back side, you know, that we're stretching, the QL muscle there. And we take some breaths here. Opening the outer body on the inhale, softening it on the exhale. So breaths really important, nice, long, comfortable breaths, conscious breaths. Using the breath and the body to declutch you from thinking, to disengage from thinking. Shifting into that knowing, that state of presence through the posture. Great, okay, back to center, and we switch to the second side. Yeah, now keep both hips back and down, bounce. Avoid turning, torquing, you know, um, the upper body so much, we want to stretch the side body more so. So we'll reach fingers a little bit further forward, having taken them to the side. And hip back, and again, stretch out the outer body, side bending our spine. And then a nice stretch through um, the lower back on the side that we are stretching. We don't force anything, but a comfortable stretch. And deepen your experience of it. experience what's going on in the stretch. Let's take a couple of more breaths. And once again, come back to the center and return to be on all fours. Now this time moving your upper body, shoulders, in circles. Just grooving your upper body, loosening, 
across the shoulders, thoracic area. Can you change direction? Yeah, and really get into that experience of opening the area. Great, good. Okay, nice. So rotations. We'll take one arm, bend it, push down into the second arm hand, moving slowly, turn your trunk to one side, and come back to center. So we rotate our spine in one direction. That's it. So good. I think we'll do two more. Always move slowly, move carefully, move with awareness. Good. Down we come. Let's switch to the second side. Flex your elbow, rotate your trunk. Good, nice. And slowly, with awareness. Let's do maybe two more. Super. Good. We're back on all fours. Okay, we'll lengthen mid upper back spine and also bring an, an arch to um, more mid upper back thoracic area. We'll do that in a puppy dog. So hips stay over knees. Take your elbows and forearms down. Extend one arm forward. Extend the second arm forward. So we keep our hips over our knees. Again, hands nice and wide, as wide as the mat, creating space across the upper back. Spread the fingers, press down the tips of your fingers, the base of your fingers, and bring the body weight to the heel of the thumb and the heel of the index finger. As you curl your chest towards your mat, open the armpit so we're, we avoid pinching across the shoulder. So we just want to open the mid spine to whatever extent. And perhaps the forehead or the chin comes to the floor. So not the hairline, not the crown of the head. And if you don't get the forehead or the chin down, or maybe the chest, then just leave your head in the air. And we'll take some breaths here. Lengthening the spine, opening the chest. So we never want pinching going on in the joint, like a shoulder here, or somewhere in the spine. If that's going on, just don't go so deep. Let's take a couple of more breaths. And inhale, up we come. All fours again, side flexion. So now this time, position on all fours. Open your ribs to one side, so you side bend the spine. Yeah, so, get, so keep the hips where they are pretty much, shoulders where they are, and just side bend your spine, keep the ribs out, and then turning your head to look back in the opposite direction towards the front. And we go side to side, so we side bend our spine, and look back in the opposite direction. Let's do a few more of these. Move slowly, move with awareness. Use the kind of the repetition of the movement to, to um, go further. Just naturally, just, you know, connective tissue, softening and opening, stretch reflex fading gives you more movement if you don't force things. Great. Maybe we'll do two more to each side. Side bend your ribs, look back in the opposite direction. Side bend, look back. And I think one more each side. Good. Great. And we drop down to be on our fronts. 
and into the sphinx. Elbows underneath your shoulders, forearm extension. Now, point your toes, bring the weight more towards the big toe, inner rotate your legs, feet about hip width apart. Tailbone down, arms like train tracks, head and neck relax, gaze forward and along the floor, and keep your lower back soft. Okay, so buttocks soft. Lower back soft, curl your chest forward, shine the chest forward. I want to take some breaths here. So as you hold the pose, just make sure your neck is okay. There's no strain in your eyes or tension. And that there's no strain on the lower back. There's no tension in the muscle. If there is, just don't go up so high. But you can drop a bit. We'll hold for a few more breaths. Back extension. Very good. And then out breath. Take your chest down. Do then any cobras. Uh, take your hands out wider down your shoulders in front maybe high fingertips maybe hands flat just see how it goes for you but we inhale curl up our trunk we come up higher keep our arch and exhale come back down so then play with the positioning of your hands wider apart closer in closer together hands flat high fingers a little bit further forward just see what helps you elevate your trunk with the least amount of effort and no strain in the back. Yeah, so it's dynamic movement. Very good. The head and neck relax. So usually taking the hands wider than the shoulders, if there's tension in the, or if we're tight around the head and neck, it can just help us um, reduce that for the pose. So we can let the pose be about, in this case, Curling of our trunk, opening the front of the body, and arching the back. Good. Let's do two more. And down we go. Good. Okay. Now, next one. We're strengthening. So it depends on your back. Uh, maybe have your hands by your ribs. We're basically going to do what we just did, lifting our trunk. Um, so again, we can use the assist of the hands, positioned out from us, or if it's okay for your back, I, what I do is I put my hands on the glutes because we want our glutes to help. And I just find my hands on my glutes. It's like feedback, isn't it? So on the inhale, bring the glutes towards each other as you lift your trunk. And on the exhale, come back down. So we do about a dozen of these. Mindful of your back. As I say, use your hands to assist the lift until you strengthen your muscles sufficiently that you can do this with confidence. And engage your glutes as you lift up. So... And it's not a squeeze of the glutes as such. We don't want tension. Um, we want to engage them. So they're engaging and they're squeezing in towards one another as we lift up. So I've lost count, but I figure we'll do maybe three more. Well, I wasn't counting, I was talking. So let's say three, two, and one. Good. Pause for a moment, and we shall repeat that. So you get the idea. Take a couple of breaths. When we go again, use your hands as much as you need to, or not at all. In which case, hands are on your glutes. So let's do 12. Up we go. 11. 10. 9. Eight, 
seven, six, five, four, three, engaging your glutes, you see your legs engaging as well, two, and final one, up we go, and down. Okay, pause. Hands by your ribs. Again, mindful of the back. Hands by your ribs, push down. Lift one leg up. So the foot, the shin, the knee, and the thigh are in the air. Mindful of your back. Push into your hands. Lift the second leg up. Curl up your trunk. So we're still using our hands to support. Now you may stay there with your hands supporting the pose, if that's the intelligent thing to, for you to do. Or we take our arms out for a variation on locust. We breathe. Five, four, three, two, and one. Hands down, legs down. Take a breath here for two to recover, to reset, and then again, just we'll come back to be on all fours. So, actually, you no, know, we'll come back to do a, a sphinx. So, we'll just come back to sphinx first. Okay, good. Bring the body weight more towards the inner legs. So roll the inner leg, roll the leg inward. Because we tend to collapse in the ankles, and that ripples up to the lower back. So, we're just correcting that. Arms by your Underneath your shoulders, lower back soft. That's what we want here. So it's just soften your lower back, curl your chest. This time also we can rotate our head to look back to one shoulder, center. Rotate to look towards the second shoulder, center. And we'll do each. Shoulder in turn, a few more times. So when you do that, just take care you don't strain your neck and you don't strain your eyes. Just turn to one side and the other. That's it. Great. Pause, gaze forward. Go not directly forward because that will strain your necks. Just gaze along the floor. Gaze is soft. Curl your chest forward. Soften your lower back. And exhale, down, and coming up from your side, or pushing yourself once again, back up. So I find it useful to loosen up the lower back after a sphinx or another kind of lower back work, just free any tension that may have come back into it. We'll do a couple of circles here, loosening the lower back, and then we shall do a floating table and some bird dogs, just for strength. Tuck your toes. Lean the weight into your hands. Neutral neck. Lower abdomen in. Squeeze the upper arms in. And lift that upper kind of upper back shoulder blades towards the ceiling. Push into your hands. Lift your knees about an inch, an inch and a half. Look back at your knees. Have your hips over your knees. And then just gaze forward again. We'll hold this here. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Knees down. Very good. Okay, coming into a bird dog. Take one leg straight back. Mm -hmm. Keep the heel a little bit lower than the hip. Now again, lower abdomen in, stable. Bring your floating ribs in. Gaze forward. Imagine you're pushing into a wall. Stay here or if you like. Take the opposite arm forward. And we just hold this for a couple of more breaths. Good. 
and bring your hand on it. Okay, breath in, exhale, stretch back the other leg, knee a little bit lower down the hip, just to undo any overarching in the lumbar. Then, lower abdomen stable, bring the floating ribs in, squeeze the upper arms, and reaching forward if you wish. I'm going to roll this. Nice, comfortable, long breaths, good. Let's do one more breath in and out. Exit the pose. Stretch back into a child for a few moments. Thumb towards your heels. And now this time, gently Rock your upper body and shoulders, armpits, up and down. It's comfortable loosening movement, walk to the mid upper back, shoulders, that's it. All right, nice. And once again, all fours, let's do a, another floating table. So tuck your toes, hands underneath your shoulders and knees underneath your hips. Exhale, lower abdomen in, floating ribs in, separate your shoulder blades, lift them towards the ceiling, squeeze the upper arms, lean the weight into your hands, push into your hands, float your knees, hips over knees, and neutral neck. Okay, we'll hold this for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Knees down. Good, okay. And we sit. All right, so we'll move on to some seated um, stuff. Okay. For our hips. Sit on your bum, knees bent, feet a little wider than hip width, we lean back. So then we roll our knees to one side, we roll our knees to the second side, and let's repeat that. So we internally and externally rotate one hip and the other. Now we can stay leaning back as we are, just supporting the body weight, just kind of discharging it through the, um, the arms and the hands. So that's kind of takes weight and pressure off the lower back. But like if it's okay, be more upright. Still use your hands. You can just see just more kind of body weight coming into the challenge. And if you want to get rid of the hands all together, mindful of your back, then you can do that, or you can use one hand, alternate, or whatever, you know. Just find what works for you as you go from side to side. Just open your hips. Nice. We will do one more to each side, wherever you are. Great. Okay. So we'll, we'll stretch the glutes. Right. So let's come into this. Both feet in front, about hip width apart. Then swing your feet to one side, like we were doing uh, when we sit up. Now we turn. We turn our trunk, face our front leg. We want to take our abdomen out over this inner thigh. So we're going out over the leg. Uh, probably take your hands either side of your knee. Yeah. So they're kind of like the boundaries, our arms. Um, 
then just guide your upper body down. And you can walk your hands. And you see, you start to feel a stretch come into the glute, into the hip area as you come down. And maybe more onto your elbow. So one elbow, one hand. So just fine. So you're draping your upper body, abdomen out over the thigh. There you get that stretch. So we breathe here for a few breaths. So as I say, like we can uh, maybe have three kind of steps where we first of all, we say we stretch, so we come into the pose. And then we lengthen. So, so the lengthen will come after an initial sort of letting go. So if you don't go too far, then your stretch reflex will switch off body will give you more uh, sort of movement, uh, connective tissue will start to respond and open. So then you can go into a, further into the pose, so you lengthen. And then we can deepen, and deepen might be going physically further, so maybe like lifting chest away from the navel. But also, and more even more so, deepening is just more present to the experience, just deepening into the connection with the body, with the stretch, with the breath, and even more so with the awareness in which it all happens. So like stretch, lengthen, deepen. Good. Okay, come on up. So now we sit up again. Leg stays the air, but we go out to the side. So the elbow is roughly in line with the hip for our forearm. And we extend up, so it's a side body stretch. And then reach out, it's a nice side leg stretch. Reach out over your head, maybe turn your head, gaze towards the hand and the thumb, but just ensure that it's okay for your neck. So if, if the head is hanging, don't do that, it's gonna pull on the neck. Let it feel nice, and again, a nice stretch through the side body, and again, the lower back on one side of QL, so there, good. Three, and two, and one. Good. Use your hands, whatever, up we come. And we do that protocol, do the second side. So, so, so the first one, we still have opening in the hips, right? But with, additionally, then we stretch the glute and the hip, and then we do a side body stretch. But once again, hands, either side of your knee. So that's kind of the perimeter boundary between which you take your belly down onto your thigh and then we release ourselves lower. So again, just watch the stretch. Don't go too far. Let your nervous system trust that you're okay. And we can go into the lengthening and we just get the right amount of stretch, the right amount of challenge, where we can manage the four dynamics, external dynamic, active muscles, engagement of muscles, physical, but the inner dynamic stays soft, stay soft, nervous system stays cool, pelvic floor soft, and we maintain then the dynamic of the breath, mouth softly closed, long, slow, comfortable breaths, conscious breaths, and we maintain the dynamic of focus, of mindfulness, that transition out of thinking into just awareness, the knowing, immediate knowing and awareness of the experience. And then we can deepen, which may have a physical dimension to it, but certainly more so, more of an experiential one, just sinking into awareness. Connecting more deeply with what's happening now. Okay, and so we exit. Up we come. And now we go out to the side from being upright. We take it, so we lean out to the side with the elbow more or less roughly in line with the hip. Imagine you're between two panes of glass. Okay, so we extend up and we rotate out over 
upper head. And maybe turning the head to gaze towards the hand, the base of the thumb. If the head is hanging, undo that. If the floating ribs are jutting out, bring them in. Nice side body stretch and stretch for lower back on the inside. Let it feel nice. Good. And we'll take a couple of more breaths. Stretching out over your head, reaching out to the wall that you're pointing towards. Okay, three. So the hip can go back here. So we'll, we'll probably want to move towards the shoulder, but we want to stretch that lower back, hip back, and reach away from it. Good. Three, two, and one. Nice. Up you come. Great. And let's transition then to be on our backs. You do full extension first of all. So stretch your legs away, reach into your heels. And reach your arms overhead, back behind. Stretch out your body. Reach into your heels. Comfortable here. And we'll side bend again. So to do that, we'll just bring our hands back by our sides initially. Bring your inner legs together. So first of all, the, uh, the top half of the body. So keep your hips and waist where they are. Take your arms overhead. And then take your head, walk your shoulders, your chest over to one side of the mat. So you side bend again. So you side bend. And we stretch back that side with our arm. If you want, take the wrist and just stretch out your side body from your hip. So side flexion of the spine here through the shoulder into the hands. Now maybe stay here, maybe this is just right for you, but if, if it's okay for your back, then also we'll flex from the waist down. So we'll do that by keeping the waist where it is, hips where they are, taking our feet and our legs over to the same side that we've taken the shoulders. So you see, we get that side bend there. Mindful of your back. And then if you want to lengthen or deepen, you can take the outer, well, I guess it's the inner leg, and put the foot rested on the outer foot. Just mind your back. Okay, so comfortable challenge, right? That's all we want. And we take some breaths. Feel the body. Let's take two more breaths here. Return to the center, reset yourself, and then going to the second side. So hips and waist stay where they are. We walk, elbow walk, or slide, or shuffle the ribs, the chest, the shoulders, the head over to the second side of the mat, and we side bend from the hip through the upper body to the shoulder. You can take that arm and the side we're stretching out over the head out to the side and then maybe take the wrist just get a stretch through your side body so again those three parts the stretch the initial stretch the lengthening that's going further to a you know comfortable safe challenge and then the deepening which might be more physical but certainly more um, presence, and connection, intimacy brought into the pose. And we can stay as we are or then bring the lower part of the body into the pose. So take our feet over to the same side that the shoulders have gone to. Again, just stretch, feel what's going on in your back. 
make a decision that you just stay there. That's the right amount of stretch or a little bit more if you want. Cross your inner leg over, resting foot on the lower. And we hold comfortably, even though there can be challenge. Remember, external, challenge, internal, soft. Breath, dynamic, comfortable. Mm -hmm. And the dynamic of presence, of awareness, of focus, maintained also. So yoga asana, right? We relax, awareness, free from tension. Let's take a couple more breaths. And return to the center. Slowly pause for a few moments, just reset. Okay, we'll take our arms out at shoulder level. Let your head roll to one side. Center, let your head roll to the second side. Center, we'll just do a couple more. Rotation side to side, loosening out our shoulder, and our head and our neck. Always moving, always moving every part with awareness and carefully, but particularly with the neck, taking care. All right, we come back to center and we'll take one knee in. We'll bring the other knee in. Take hold of the knees, the shins. Lengthen through your calves into your heels. Don't don't squeeze or pull. Just just hold. Rock a little bit side to side. Okay. Pause. Take your arms out, and now let your knees go to one side, and let your head go towards the second side, opposite direction. And the knees don't have to get anywhere near the floor. Just twist your spine side to side with comfort. And of course, after doing several, you'll naturally find more movement being offered by your body. So we work with the body. We don't force or attack the body. We just work in collaboration with our nervous system, connective tissue, muscles, joints, yeah, grand. Keep the shoulders down, the back ribs down. Lovely. Back to the center. Once again, hugging your knees. Now also this time, flexion in mid upper back, we curl up mid upper. Three, and two, just tuck the chin, but avoid yanking the knee, and one. Okay, good, down, and we'll do um, some bed bug pose variations for strengthening again. So we lie as we are, but we take our knees into the air, and knees apart, and we look to have, or hip width apart, and we look to have a right angle in the knee, so calves and shins parallel. Then, keeping the shoulders down, we take our arms vertically straight up. So we're like a dead insect lying on its back, basically dead bug pose. Now you may stay here, it all depends on the challenge that's okay for you, maybe stay here. Or we start to sort of robot march where we take one leg into extension and at the same time take the opposite arm into extension and we look to reach forward and behind and the heel and the hand to touch mat and then come back to center in a good dead bug pose and then switch arm and leg see and we repeat that now slower is better than fast because it asks more motor control and stamina and the detail is important uh, but not so slow that nothing's going on you just, you just find that rhythm Oh, if 
you're comfortable with taking, say, two limbs into extension at the same time, what we do is we take all four limbs into extension at the same time. Both arms, both legs going forward and back. But if that's too much of a pull on your back, then go back to just opposite like an arm, or even just holding the dead bug position without the dynamic movement. So let's do uh, maybe six more. So six, five, four, three, two, and one dead bug pose. Let's grab our knees again, rock a little bit side to side. We'll just, uh, we'll lengthen out our hamstrings and we'll do a bridge and we'll warm them up. We're kind of done now. So, okay, down we go. Stretch your legs dynamically, okay? So legs straight, arms out to the side and inhale, extend one heel up towards the ceiling, bring it down, stretch the other leg up, bring it down. Yeah, so we'll just stretch out each leg in turn several times. Let's do two more for each leg. Grand. Down. Arms by your side. Bending your knees, step your heels towards your bum. Feet about hip width apart. Spread your toes and connect the big toe particularly to the floor. Just lift your bum for a moment, relax your bum, your lower back, come down, and then lifting up into a bridge, press down the big toes, lift your tailbone, rise up onto your back shoulders so you can walk yourself onto your shoulders. Keep the big toes down, glutes, like we did earlier in that exercise where we lifted the trunk, bring the Bum cheeks towards one another, engage them, lift your hips and come into a comfortable bridge pose. Now again, toes, big toes down, toes spread, glutes, holding an imaginary, say, piece of paper between them, lifting the hips. Push on your feet, just open the chest towards the chin. Or if no pinching in the back, if that's going on, don't go up so high. And you take a couple of more breaths here, opening the front of the body, arching your back. Good. And exhale, release your body down. Position the soles of your feet together and open your knees to either side, left and right. For a moment, interlace your fingers. Take your arms overhead and back behind. Stretch out your spine again. Keep the back ribs down. Floating ribs into your body. Take a couple of breaths here. Knees come back up, the knees come towards you, pull the back of your thighs, and then just reach both heels up towards the ceiling. Now, option here to have the knees bent, of course, to take pressure off the hamstrings and the lower back. But we are looking in time to have our legs straight and maybe the arms by our side. So it's up to you. Okay, 10, 
nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Bring your knees down, feet down, stretch your heels towards the front of the mat. And bring one knee in, take it with the opposite hand. Let it across your body. Now mindful of the lower back. Don't bring any tension to the lower back. Just come into a comfortable twist. Reach out to the side. With your free arm, turn your head again. Towards you. Straight arm. Take the bread into your lower back. Into the top hip and glute. Comfortable twist. Experience it. Okay, let's do the other side. Yeah, so take care with the lower back sacroiliac area. Don't force anything in. Stretch the hip, the glute, breathe into the lower back. Keep it free from tension. Twist your spine, turn your head. Nice, long, slow breaths. Come back again to be on your back. Hold your knees. Soft here, rocking side to side. Eyes closed. Use the rocking to quieten and center and ground. So gentle rocking, and then from here, we come to take in a comfortable lying down position for relaxation. Well, it's more actually correctly meditation in the lying down posture. So uh, you want to be comfortable. Your knees can stay bent or extend your legs forward to the front of your mat. And let's place our hands on our belly for, for this practice. Be comfortable now, be comfortable, so your body can be quiet and still. And we'll just take 90 seconds, two minutes for this short meditation where with our eyes closed, we'll turn our gaze inward. We become mindful of our body, our body awareness. We become mindful of our breath breath awareness. So we can experience the movement of our hands and our belly as our body breathes in and out. So for the last 60 seconds, 90 seconds, so we'll just practice mindfulness of our body, sense of the body and awareness, mindfulness of our breath, Breath awareness. And as we stay mindful of our body and our breath, internally we also look to soften. So the softening is a letting go of tension of inner contraction. And the mindfulness of the breath, of the body, the softening on the inside then just allows us to settle into present moment awareness. And to rest in it, to rest in open, relaxed, restful, at ease, present moment awareness. And just settle there for about you know, 60 seconds or so. Mindful of the body, mindful of the breath, softening into awareness.
Okay, so now we begin to close off our practice. Once again, coming back to having a sense of yourself. Importantly, have a sense of the room that you're in. Connect with your body and begin to waken your body up. So small movements, but first wiggle your fingers, your hands, your feet, your toes. Let your head roll side to side. Letting larger movements appear, whatever's good, stretch back behind your head, hug your knees, whatever feels good. So when you're ready, with your eyes closed still, roll over onto your side. Pause for a moment, become more awake. Then slowly, with, your, with an inhale, open your eyes. And let the world slowly, comfortably come back in. Mark the end of the relaxation and more awake, more fully present, alert. Mark the end of the practice itself then by pushing up from your side and we'll leave it at that.